Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the 2009 AP Microeconomics FRQ question number one. This question, um, unsurprisingly, is related to monopolists. Many of these first questions are. So let's go ahead and work through it. In this case, we are told that CableNow is the only supplier of cable TV services. It offers a wide array of TV channels. It's an unregulated unreg firm and is currently earning an economic profit. Assume that cable now does not practice price discrimination. So the first part of the question is asking us to draw a correctly labeled graph for cable now and show each of these following four parts. So let's go ahead and draw that. We have our typical axes of price and quantity. And what we want to think about is the profit maximizing quantity of cable services, the profit maximizing price, the area of economic profit, as well as the socially optimal level of cable services. Okay, so let's think about this first by drawing a demand curve. That's always a good place to start. So let's draw a downward sloping demand curve. And what we know is that a monopolist will set MR equal to MC, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And we know that the marginal revenue is the derivative of the demand curve, so it'll be twice the slope. So this is your marginal revenue. And then we also know that our standard, we, can, we are faced here with a typical you know, marginal cost and average total cost curve. So what's going to happen is we have our average total cost, which reaches some point of a minimum efficient scale and then comes back up. And then we also know that we will have a marginal cost curve that will go upward sloping. So how do we know that the marginal cost curve is sloped this way? Well, we know that in the case where marginal cost is less than average total cost, average total cost will be falling. And then once average total cost starts rising again and is positive, then we know that marginal cost is greater than average total cost. Um, so that's how I derived the overall shape of marginal cost based on average total cost. So now let's think about what the profit maximizing quantity of cable services is. In this case, we need to figure out where MR equals to uh, MC. So in this case, MR equals to MC right here. And so if we draw this upwards and then across, we know that this is going to be your profit maximizing quantity, so that's part A. And then we also know that this is your profit maximizing price, because we are taking where MR equals MC and then going all the way up to that point of, on the demand curve, which is going to be where the monopolist sets their price. Now let's think about what the area of economic profit is. So in this case, what we need to think about is the relationship of this price and quantity in relation to average total cost. So in this case, we know that that would be right here. And in this case, we know that the average, the economic profit is going to be everything above the average total cost. I'm going to change this color to blue so that you can see this a little bit more clearly. So essentially, everything above the average total cost is going to be economic profit. That's economic profit. The socially optimal level of cable services, so that's going to be QS. So what we're asked essentially is where um, QS lies. So in this case, we want to look at where demand equals marginal cost or price equals marginal cost. So we know that demand equals marginal cost right here. And therefore, QS is right here. So let's go over these first four parts really quickly. We know that the monopolist sets marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So we found that that would happen here. That sets the 
profit maximizing price as well as the profit maximizing quantity and we know that the area of economic profit is when you take the price that's going to be set at p star and then you subtract all average total costs and that'll give you the economic profit so that's what we did right here now let's move on to part b so in this case Part B states, assume that the government grants cable now a lump sum subsidy of $1 million. Will the policy change cable now's profit maximizing quantity of cable services? Explain. So in part B, um, we need to think about what a lump sum subsidy does. As we've gone over in other previous FRQ questions, the difference between a lump sum subsidy versus a per unit tax or subsidy or a per or a per unit subsidy is that the lump sum subsidy is a one-time deal. And what that means is that your marginal cost is not changing as a result of the lump sum subsidy. And as a result of this, this means that cable now's profit maximizing quantity does not change. So we can say no impact because there's no change in marginal cost. Now let's look at part C. Instead of granting a subsidy, assume that the government chooses to require CableNow to produce the quantity at which CableNow earns zero economic profit. On the graph you drew in part A, label the quantity QR. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and redraw this graph. It's good review anyways. So let's go ahead and draw that graph again right here. We have our standard axes of price and quantity, downward sloping demand, marginal revenue with twice the slope, average total cost, marginal cost, So, what do we need to think about when we think about the overall place where cable now earns zero economic profit? Well, what we need to think about is we need to think about where demand equals average total cost. Because what that means is that the price that the monopolist is setting is equal to how much it costs them on average to make that good. So in that case, it would be right here. And so your average total cost intersection demand at that point, and therefore that is equal to QR. And for the sake of comparison, just to really hit it home, let's think about again where those original points were. In this case, we had MR equal to MC as your profit maximizing quantity. That was here. So this was Q star. And then we also know that um, we had the second one which was the socially optimal level of cable services where there were no externalities so that happened where we had p equal to mc or demand equal to mc which happens right here so as you can see in this instance what's happened is we've had an outward shift in terms of quantity now let's think about part d so part d is saying at QR is the firm's accounting profit positive, negative, or zero. Well, in this case, we know that the accounting profits, not the economic profits, is going to be positive. And the reason why is because in this case, accounting profit does not include implicit cost. So I'm going to initial accounting profit as AP does not Sorry about that, my pen is acting up a little bit. Implicit costs. So as we know from part C, we are generating zero economic profit, but we are actually generating positive accounting profit because the difference between accounting profit and 
economic profit is that accounting profit does not include those implicit costs. So now let's look at part E. Assume that a new study reveals there are external benefits associated with watching TV. Will the socially optimal quantity of cable services now be larger, smaller than, or equal to the QSU identified in part A4? Explain. So in this case, we need to think about this as um, an external benefit. So what that means is that we're dealing with a positive externality and so what that means is that we have these benefits that aren't typically considered until you really think about it it's like you know a extra benefit um, as a result of that versus a negative benefit or a negative externality which would be something like noise from fireworks so in this case we have external benefits and so what that means is that the social optimum will be larger than the QS we identified down here and the reason why we have a larger QS is because if you think about it, if we know that there's a positive externality associated with watching TV, then the demand for TV is going to go up. So there's, you know, a increase in demand for TVs. So there's an increase in demand for TV, and as a result of that, we see a higher quantity. Um, overall that's desired than the QS that we originally originally found in part A4. So let's go ahead and go over all of these parts real quick. So we know in part B that the lump sum subsidy does not lead to any significant changes, mainly as a result of the fact that a lump sum subsidy does not change the marginal cost. In part C, we know that uh, where demand equals average total cost is where we would generate zero economic profit. In part D, we know that accounting profit is positive because it's not including the implicit cost like economic profit does. And then finally, in part E, we know that a positive externality will lead to an increase in demand for television and as a result, more quantity supplied versus the original that we found in part A4. So that covers it for question number one of 2009. If you have any additional questions, feel free to check out uh, Learnerator.com. We have hundreds of practice questions for AP Micro. And if you also are working through different FRQ questions, you can check out our channel for tons of walkthroughs through other years of AP Micro FRQs. That's it for this time. I will see you guys next time.